these things, you know, we have the porous borders. Yes. Some traders may not even pass there. Only that what I did not understand with the minister is one thing, the issue of suspending the rises. We are not now going to know who is the worst trader. Because if you suspend it, everybody, the one who has been selling probably beer, or the one selling the uh, mattresses or selling what, may start selling other things. Now, how will Casita identify that this is a proper trader? And this one is another one. And that's the crisis actually of the post colonial state. Sometimes, <coughs> you know, in the fewer problems and what, the Kenyan yes. government reduced fuel. The Minister of Finance, the Minister of Finance, who went on the parliament, as you are saying, the MPs are doing what? S said we have reduced. People on the pump remained with the price. Well, they raised the taxes eventually. Yeah. Again. Now, you can now see the crisis. So, these things sometimes they need seating. It's but probably not a solution reducing. Yes, right. you, know, you can't reduce it immediately and you solve the problem. You need to seek and look at the strategic policy of the economy right. and move forward. Otherwise, these are the things which we are suffering from the fuel prices, shortage of food. And uh, what I want to agree with you is that it is not only the Minister of Agriculture, actually. Even when you look at the Minister of Health, what is recommended by Millennium Development? goals and what other this UNDP yes. is that most of the African countries are budgeting below 15% and that one what do you mean 15% be because like Minister of Health <coughs> yes. they wanted every they wanted to get 10% yes to make sure that you are above that so that you can provide all, this, about 6%. Uh, all these services but now for us because we are an economy which is dependent on other people on a certain set, if you are talking about 72%. So that means that every economy is running, is running below. Okay, <coughs> let's talk about <coughs> something else very briefly. You mentioned ghost traders. What's the solution? Uh, the ghost, the let's, very briefly, I mean, in 1972, I think, uh, when we had a crisis, the president at that time declared an economic war, what he called an economic war, and he expelled Asians. Uh, is that what you're looking at now? No, what I'm looking at, no, we are. You're saying you want to count them, Chinese and India. Are you going to expel them after counting them? No, they are not saying expelling them because that is not a solution. They are saying identifying the proper traders. You see, the problem is. These people have an advantage because if you are coming from India and another one is coming from China, sometimes if they are not checked properly, they have goods which they sell at a lesser price and when they get the same rent, and these people, so the traders may say, no, we are renting at the same rate, and these people are selling at a cheaper price, because sometimes they get the, the advantage of entering. Sometimes it's not racist. <coughs> you know what the minister was saying. Another person is just down the Chikubo. Another one is here near your radio station. So they have disparities, and those ones have an advantage, because sometimes they deal directly with their people. And ours have to get license. You have to trade out. So you're talking about protectionism. Yes. So these people, if the government can look at, and that has been actually the weakness. But also, Casita, the Casita group can also identify them. Okay. The only problem which I have also, if you find you have been seeing the problem of Kampara City Council before it became KCCA, somebody you find him in a shop selling counterfeit products. You get me? Yes. Casita should also come in and say, if they call to me selling this product, then this shop should be closed. But because they are friends in business, sometimes they also ignore to arat those who are in charge. Briefly, maybe before we go for the break, mm -hmm. one of the issues raised by traders is that these people expatriate their earnings in dollars. What do you want them to do? You don't want them to open shops, no, but no, then you don't, we don't want them to trade, yeah, and then you don't want them to sell their money. Should they sell shillings? I, I don't know. Maybe we started economics different, but in a liberalized economy, there is no way you can control capital flight. All right. We'll because have to some people buy their own money. Maybe if you go to the airport and check, and others don't pass the airport. So maybe you want them to send easy. Uganda shillings to China. You this is not a joke, but you mean not. Radio one. We're going for a break. We'll be back. Tonight we're discussing the Uganda, Uganda's current economic crisis. What can be done? Uh, we'll be back. Do stay with us. Uh, thank you for coming to the executive suite, madam. My name is Richard, your executive banker, and I'm here to handle all your banking needs. Oh, really? Thank you. I noticed you don't have any cues here. Uh, no, Mrs. Asio, we do not. Oh, wow. You even know my name? But of course, madam. Today we are offering you a current account with a gold visa debit card, home loans with attractive rates, gold visa credit cards, and unsecured personal loans. All that for me? Yes. In addition, we can offer you internet banking so that you can access our services from anywhere, even your home. Oh, this is too much. What else will you give me now? 
Chai. Experience executive banking at Stanbic Bank. Uh, excuse me, madam. Your cup of uh, chai? Ask about executive banking at your nearest branch or visit our executive banking suite in Nakasero Towers, Forest Mall at Lugogo, Garden City, Ntinda, Makerere, Mbarara, Mukono, Mbale, Lira and Gulu. Stanbic Bank. Moving forward. Special announcement. The organizing committee of St. Leo's College, Chegobe, Obis Association, invites with pleasure all Obis to the general meeting to be held on Saturday, 9th July 2011 at 2 p.m. at the College of Computing and Information Sciences Conference Room, Makere University Main Campus, Kampala. For further information, please contact Dr. Toha Ali Basamba, Vice President, Obis Association, on 0782-475-422. And Stefan Mugabe on 0776-440-538. End of announcement. Just like an uncut diamond is brought to life by a match skill and dedication, only our brewmaster holds the secret to crafting a crystal malt lager. Under the exacting international standards at Now Breweries, he uses only the finest, most carefully selected grains of roasted crystal malt and sets in motion the delicate process of releasing their full roast. The result is a world-class beer with a fresher aroma, a richer golden color, and a maltier taste. Nile Gold Crystal Malt Lager. Beyond an ordinary malt. Not for sale to persons under 18. Hi, I've got just 30 seconds to list all the destinations in Africa served by Kenya Airways out of Nairobi. <sighs> Abidjan, Accra, Addis Ababa, Mutumura, Cairo, Kotno, Dakar, Dar es Salaam. <laughs> He's never going to make it. Kenya Airways covers 70% of all destinations in Africa alone and several more worldwide. If you're starting from Uganda, there is no rush because Kenya Airways operates the most frequencies every day from Entebbe to the hub in Nairobi. So, you can pick up any of these connections at your own convenience. Kenya Airways, the pride of Africa. Several times up. Malabo, Mauritius, Mombasa. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanbic Bank. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. Uganda's current economic crisis, what can be done? You'll join us later to give us your issues, your questions, comments, and so possible solutions. There's a crisis. We have a syndrome, different problems. So the patient is suffering from different things, malaria, cough, and so on. It's called a syndrome. <laughs> our current, our economy seems to be suffering from different things. High interest rates, high inflation, a very weak shilling. Traders strike uh, yesterday and today. Power shortage. You've lost 122 megawatts. Off, switched off the national grid just like that. The taxi strike is coming on Monday. So we are seeing a syndrome here. Our guests tonight, Honorable Albert Odman Okello, managing consultant at Terra Pharma Consult, immediate former shadow minister of finance at Planning and Economic Development, and Mr. Steven Asimo from the Media Center. Honorable Okello, let's talk about electricity. 120 megawatts switched off because it was geo geothermal uh, generated. Is that sustainable when we don't have, we, we've cut off 120 megawatts from our power grid? Obviously, it's a big, it's a big, big blow to the country in terms of power. Because when we talk about uh, injections of money into infrastructure, we talk about uh, sectors including uh, that of energy. So um, the bottlenecks in the energy sector are well known. The interventions as well are well known. Uh, but what appears to be apparent is that the short-term interventions that government designed in this sector uh, uh, to, 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 to take fort until we have sustainable energy sources from hydro have not been widely utilized. We injected in 92 billion shillings last year. Uh, in the but that only works for a quarter. Uh, yeah, One yeah, quarter. but, but uh, they have not accounted for where that money went. And that has connotations linking the well, let's get the perspective. Election, yes. We need about 200, w w from the figures I've seen, we need about mm -hmm. 200 million dollars. This year we budgeted 212 million dollars to, mm -hmm. to, to, to subsidize. That means we pay people like Agreco, the independent power producers, to give us electricity. They produce it expensively. We buy it cheaply because we cannot afford to pay high prices. As yes. we wait for hydropower, which is cheaper. Exactly. Yes. So, I mean, can, can government afford to say, to walk out and say we can't, we can't, we can't raise prices, the president seems to be opposed to it, uh, power prices, and then we can't subsidize it? Is that sustainable? Can we go through it? You know, I, in my view, 
there are issues that have never come to light issues on energy and prices yes and the role uh, of these concessionaires in energy yes uh, sometime early this year or the end of last year something was raised by the minister of energy then and it had to do uh, with the dealings of uh, umeme and dealers in this sector in respect to their agreement with government regarding the pricing of electricity there is a big issue that has never seen light and that's where you saw uh, uh, a standoff at that time between the minister and his peers the yes. core of the matter was in the pricing mechanism of yes. Fuel. yes what exactly is happening between the government and these concessionaire companies is something that has eluded us as right. a public <coughs> very very valid we point. need it we needed to deal with that right. and see where is the bottleneck that's a very valid point yes. honorable mm -hmm. but now we have a new minister who's a technical man she was for she was managing director at at, at uh, UEB uh, in the past Irene Muloni she's mm -hmm. now minister so that should not be a problem well well, well uh, if you want to go into uh, uh, the new minister coming in and having been from the sector we will also need to deal with how she left the sector without imputing anything yes yes what are the circumstances of her departure from the mini from, from, from that uh, ministry you see there are lots of things that are going on in that sector that we need to deal with so basically she you knows you're saying mm. we need to clean up the relationship between the government and those IPPs and those companies all right we need to clean it up but let's look at it in the long term assuming it's cleaned up and assuming and being very optimistic yeah. can can we afford or can we not can we afford to not subsidize those companies you buy see, far from them expensively for our people you see diesel is expensive using diesel for power generation requires money yes and that impacts on the price of electricity the consumer to mitigate uh, the impact of the higher price that's where we saw uh, the subsidies government subsidizing yeah. on, on the consumers and that was what was agreed we said we must subsidize the consumer why can't we continue right yes now? and you know because now so you're saying we should continue we, we need money yeah we, we need money in the interim we need money to do that and government must find the money and the problem government has now is to find the money because priorities for spending are not in that area as I already explained Mr. Simo, let's talk about the weak shilling. How, what can we do about the weak shilling? Do you have any good ideas there? No, uh, but before the weak shilling, uh, I just wanted to <laughs> remind <laughs> the man that uh, the electricity problem in this country, of course, as the president was talking about, is uh, their party's problem. But the issue is... What did my party do? Of course, the president has elaborated that very vividly. <laughs> 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 well, he backed off from that argument no. <laughs> two years ago. No. He realized he had made a mistake. No. <laughs> anyway, what you are talking about the weak shilling, of course, the Bank of Uganda, under the leadership of uh, Professor Mtebile, yes. is doing what it can to make sure that they contain the situation. But all what is bringing all this, you are talking about the patient. And even this thing of electricity you are talking about, all these things come back to that money you are talking about. Now, the weak shilling, of course, if the man continues pouring some dollars in the market, then they will reduce and these people will have, because everybody comes with a bag. But let's let's agree. Let's 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 examine the market. The spreads, the difference between buying and selling, are very wide, which signifies an unstable market. There's a speculation mm. st sentiment within the market. Yeah. Even though the central bank, the rate has not raised, rise, risen for a week, four days, but the spreads are still wide. But that you, shows you, that you know there is advantages and advantages of speculation. People normally, actually, when they are in the market, some will say, now the shilling will go down like this. The next day. They say the pound has reached 2,700, and the other one will keep on holding the money. And the, of course, Mutevila the other day said he has more dollars than any other person in the market. So I hope. He well, there is a shortage of dollars. We had the, the reserves have fallen, fell by 400 million dollars mm -hmm. when the, mm -hmm. the president took out some money to buy jets. Yeah. But he's also been pumping money to the economy. Some of it he has not told Absolutely. us. So the reserves are lower, and to replenish them, you need to spend more to buy the shilling. Yeah, but exactly. of course there has been an the dollar, there has been an argument on that side of security. I think what we have in this country is all 
done under that security you are talking about. Now let's forget about the security. Let's talk about the, real, the realities. Yeah, let's but the reality is that you are talking about the money removed. Yeah. No, let, uh, let's, let's talk about the details. Mm. Right now the reserves are very low mm -hmm. and they continue to be becoming still sales. The Bank of Uganda, the Central Bank still sells money on the market dollars. So that means they are still going low. And if they want to replenish them, it's very expensive buying those same dollars. But the economy, uh, when the economy gains, they will not go back. So that's the the, the essence. You see, well, okay, how can we stabilize the shilling? Selling is not being able to help because we have don't have a see, lot of dollars. For me, I have a big problem with what Bank of Uganda is trying to do. They should have done that long time ago. They should have come out to explain what is happening. They should have come out to say this is our monetary policy. So we have instruments for stabilization of the economy. I think they've, done that. they've, done, I think they've done that. The problem was uh, some of the statements that were made last uh, last month, I think. But the Bank of you Uganda see, has done very well. You see, whatever system. has been happening in the Bank of Uganda happened under the watch of, of, of the governor and, and, and the people there. Yes. Now, what they are doing now are, are trying to treat wounds of the injury caused when they were watching. This is what I'm talking about. Go on. We spent 400 and 19 billion shillings to mop out liquidity in the economy. Yes, which was caused by us. When the treasury was raided, Mr. Mutevide was there. It was not passed through Auditor General. It was not passed through everybody. Go, go it was raided, yes. Go yes go. Now, if you got the treasury without the authority of the people, what have you just done? You, you, you have raided the money. You have raided the treasury.